morning, afternoon or evening, depending on when you're watching this video. For those who don't know me, my name is Mr Baldwin and I am the Head of Business and Economics at school. Um, talking to you because you have opted to do a business subject at Key Stage 4, Year 10, for September 2020. Now because you've opted for it, I'd like to assume that you have some form of an inkling as to what you have opted for, i.e. business studies. Now, this should have no implication or problems with your exam, but you have chosen a subject at quite a turning point in economic and business um, history, if you like, um, for a global economy. Um, we're moving through a global pandemic, the, the first of its kind in, in modern history. Um, Britain itself is transitioning towards a Brexit, leaving the European Union. Uh, myself, I've never existed as a being outside of the European Union, so I don't know what that entails. Over time, you'll understand what my viewpoint is on the situation, and hopefully you will form your own. But both this global pandemic and the Brexit situation are going to have huge implications for the global and particularly the UK economy. Um, governments tend to try and deal with things one one thing at a time. Um, Britain now has two significant economic shocks, if you like, that it's going to have to deal with. And on a greater scale, these are the things that we will talk about. Um, when you join Year 10 in September, hopefully things will be back to normal. I won't be talking to you from um, my little conservatory or what you can probably tell is like a play room. Um, of my kids, not me obviously. Um, but we're back together in September and we'll be discussing how, why and for what purpose business exists. Now 99% of the time, and this is reflected in the exam, um, business exists for profit. You get a small proportion of businesses that are altruistic and exist to do something nice for society. Um, I've got a friend who has a sort of wakeboarding ex outside sport company in France and obviously he's struggling at the moment because the pandemic means at the moment he can't travel out there but he's hoping that air bridges are going to be created and he'll be able to start his business back up again. But up in the build up to him starting this company and selling a previous one, he's always done altruistic sort of endeavours. <laughs> so in Bristol where he lives, when he's not in France, he has a couple of network groups whereby he organises and in part takes people to the coast just just to as a social event. He doesn't make any money from it. He just organises it and gets dozens of people to go for a surf, kayaking, climbing, whatever it is. He just enjoys that social endeavour of doing that. You know, he'll even also break even so he doesn't make any money from it for it. Hire out cinemas and put on specific films that people want to see, you know, niche films like surfing, outdoor sort of films. Um, so people can go and watch it. So there are different types of businesses that exist. Um, and as we talk through the syllabus, these will come to the forefront. Um, but you guys have chosen this, this subject. If you've chosen the GCSE, um, you primarily are going to be aware that it is all exam. It's two exams, two 90 minute exams. A mixture of multi-choice, um, which are harder than you might think, small answer questions, so define up to three points, very simple, up to 12 points, where you've got to show an understanding, analyse, um, discuss and question what you're saying. You know, this leads to as a result. Um, if you've chosen the vocational course, um, then again, you still have an exam. Um, you can get a couple of goes at doing that exam, unlike the GCSEs. But most of your work will be built up a portfolio, um, covering very similar topics as the GCSE, but in a portfolio of coursework, maybe not as much detail, but still very much the same content area. So the sort of things that you're going to look at over the next two years, um, obviously you've got year 10 and year 11, but in year 10, sorry while I look at my notes, um, We'll be breaking it down into five units, and you'd never guess in year 10, 11, sorry, it's also another five units. units. But in year 10 for GCSE, but there is some mirroring here for the, the vocational guys, so it's very similar, so just be aware. 
Um, the first thing we'll talk about is enterprise and entrepreneurship. Why people start businesses. And I'll talk about me personally. I'll talk about several of my friends that run businesses. Some well, some not so well. Now, from my background and my hobbies and so forth, most of the people I know that run businesses or organisations um, are sort of outdoor sports, you know, surfing, that sort of thing. Um, and I've got a few examples, and I'll talk about those, um, and why they started businesses and, you know, why they still continue to run those businesses, even though they might not be doing so well. Um, then we'll go on to the next unit, which is spotting opportunities, so market research, where do you get ideas from? One of my favourite words is serendipity. Um, you know, you might come up with an idea at a serendipitous moment. Um, that's kind of like an idea that comes about without thinking about it. Um, you might have had an idea for all time that you wanted to do something. Um, like my friends, you might have a hobby that just transitions into a job. Um, or it might be that you've hit retirement, you get a lump sum, and you might buy into a franchise just because you want to remain your own boss at some level, um, but you need to ha generate some income continually. So we'll talk about the difference of ownerships of businesses from sole traders, that's one person owning a business, all the way up to public limited companies. At A level, we can talk about public limited companies in quite a bit of detail, but the GCC, just a basic knowledge of what they are and why they exist is all that's needed. Um, we'll also talk about franchises, just mentioned that, um, maybe a little bit on cooperatives, and I will mention something called limited partnerships, which is now in the syllabus, but previously have been ignored, and what the benefits of that sort of ownership um, existing. Then we'll talk about putting um, ideas into practice. So that is, getting your product to market, getting your marketing mix right, product price promotion packaging place, um, getting the finance right, where are you gonna get your money from, those sorts of things. And then we'll bounce on to making the business effective. So that's the sort of next layer of that. So um, understanding the product life cycle, where you exist on that, um, the Boston matrix, um, again, they sort of fit together, marketing maps, all these things are sort of easy to understand theories. And then at the end of the year, we will look at what is probably my favorite um, unit, which is understanding the external environment. And that is a little bit, if you like, a taste of economics. It's um, interest rates, exchange rates, unemployment, inflation, um, and a couple of other things splattered in there. But essentially we're looking at how a government or the Bank of England manipulating one or several of those things can influence the behaviour of you and me as customers and even businesses. So for example, the um, Bank of England keeps interest rates as low as possible. Interest rates are the, the cost of borrowing money or the reward of saving money. Now you, if you think about this, will probably understand this quite well, but if interest rates go up, if you have money, you will want to be rewarded for saving, so you put a bucket of money in the bank. That means that the banks don't have a load of money they can lend out. The problem there is that if interest rates are too high, someone like me who buys cars with a loan, that means that the cost of that loan will be high because interest rates are high, so I might not want to borrow. For a business, just like me, they want interest rates to, low, to be low because with low interest rates, they'll be happy to borrow money, They'll be happy to borrow money to expand their business, buy products and those um, buy goods and services to sell to customers. And low interest rates mean that businesses will expand, they'll sell more stuff. It means that I can borrow money, which means obviously I buy more stuff. But ultimately the government likes this because on the whole, everything we buy has VAT on it, 20% tax. So for every pound I spend extra, the government gets 20p. So we're happy because we're spending, businesses are happy because they're expanding, you know, getting more money, revenue, profit, and the government's happy because of every extra pound they spent, they get 20p. So that's why governments like people to spend money, because um, it creates employment. But the downside is, and these things we'll talk about later on, is everyone's spending money, that means prices go up because everyone's competing for the same products, which causes inflation, which is bad for an economy because it means that we have less to spend in, in real terms. So that's year 10. Year 11, now we do a, a unit quite similar to unit 
year 10 work so that we're building on the knowledge that you gained in year 10 and sort of expanding your understanding and then it helps in the two exams. So we talk about growing a business and that's where we go into a bit more detail about, you know, sole traders all the way up to public limited companies, about making marketing decisions. So we do a light touch of the marketing mix in year 10, then we look at it in a little bit more detail and we're prepping up for exam questions about um, you get given an example, should company A increase their prices or should they um, source better materials, so in improve product? Or you know, should product B um, reduce their prices or um, increase customer service? So that's part of product again. And you get given a scenario and you've got to choose between the two with your understanding of the marketing mix. Um, then we go on to operational decisions. Now it's essentially what companies are having to do at the moment make operational decisions um i was reading the other day i read too much i was reading the other day that the government had come up with this these numbers i don't know where they got them from but with a two meter social distancing um restaurants cafes and pubs would be running at 30 percent capacity now 30 percent capacity means that they could normally have 100 people in their pub or restaurant but the law or the recommendations only allow them to have 30 people. At 30 people, they're not going to make any money. So the government is reducing two to one metre. Um, that means that these firms, and again, I don't know where they got their numbers from, can run at 70% capacity. That means that for every 100 people they'd normally have in, they can have up to 70. At that point, the government argues that firms would be breaking even. So they would be existing, not necessarily making a profit, but they'd be covering all their costs, all their wages, all their rents and that sort of stuff, and firms will exist. And so we'll talk about operational decisions. Where do you get your stuff made? Um, you know, I'll talk about these things in lessons, but I try my best to buy my clothing and stuff that is a little bit ethical, um, maybe made in the UK, or at least some part made in the UK, try and support small businesses, um, because I'm aware of the difficult existence of firms doing those things in the UK because costs are higher rather than buying it in bulk from Taiwan or China at lower costs. So operational decisions. Are your customers going to be happier with a slightly more expensive British made or British finished or you know organic cotton t-shirt or will your customers be happy with something made by children that they don't really care about um, from a factory in Indonesia that's one third of the price. And you've got to work that out, you've got to balance that out, you've got to know who your customers are. Then we bounce on to uh, making financial decisions. I tend to leave that till last because it's, unless you enjoy maths, it's not the most fun. But that is simply things like break even point, looking in a little bit more detail about um, costs and profits and revenues and incomes, those sorts of things. Um, even looking in a bit more detail about calculating um, payback periods. You know, if you borrow some money, how long is it going to take to pay back? And, and interest rates, and a couple of other things. And then finally, the last unit, or as I said, I sort of tend to tweak those two around, the last two, um, is human resources. How do you look after your people in your workplace? Are you like a McGregor X person? McGregor was a theorist on human behaviour. And he said that you have either McGregor X or McGregor Y people. McGregor X people are sweeping statements, but like McDonald's. So you can't allow individual freedom and creativity in a McDonald's shop because, you know, Dave, who makes the burgers or puts all them together, you know, might be coming out of all sorts of things. You know, oh, this is my three burger special, but the customer only wanted a, a McBurger. Oh, but I've been creative. And it doesn't work. You need them to simply do what they're told to do. And how do you get them to work harder? You either pay them more money or you give them perks or... Um, you shout at them. They're McGregor X people. I would argue that most of you guys are McGregor X. You know, without close supervision, you'll get bored or you'll change angle or whatever it is, or you'll not do the work. He also said there's McGregor Y people. If you're like yes people, these people are the creative ones. So they'll be the ones that work for Google. They'll be the ones that work for you know creative industries, the arts, the TV, the films. I'd like to think that um, teachers as well. You know, allowed to be a little bit creative and flexible within it. But we'll talk about McGregor, we'll talk about Maslow, hierarchy of needs, and a couple of other things. Um, but that's what we'll do over two years. Now, 
this is the end of the first video. I hope it's given you a little bit of an intro as to what you're going to do. And um, I'll speak to you next time. Okay, cheers.